Hello friends, and welcome to Talking with Famous People. I'm Rachel, this is host Eric, and we're here to talk about objectivity and subjectivity. So, host Eric, I hear a lot of people object to your claiming that TI is objective, is that right? Yes, that's right, and they would be wrong. Hmm. So apparently, they think that because Jung said it's subjective, that we should use that understanding of it. Um, to be honest, I'm Hoseric, that's Rachel. I, I couldn't act like Rachel for very long, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm very good at imitating her. So, let me pull up the old chatteroo here. Yeah, I don't think I'm very good at imitating you either. I mean, so this we're in we're the sense of opposites attract, right? It's not it's not always the case that opposites attract, but in our case, we're when opposites do attract is because they're opposites like us. I'm an extrovert, you're an introvert. Um, so here's what I want to say about where Jung was actually was not wrong anyway is that T E. It is the, the the cognitive function that deals specifically with the logic of things outside of yourself. So, like I've mentioned before, a vacuum cleaner has its own specific logic. A uh, a a restaurant's pantry organization system has its own specific logic. You know, those are the kinds of logics that TE deals with, and those are, in that sense. Um, objective logics in the sense that they're objective data, right? So it is true that extroverted thinking is a form of attention that deals with that which is outside of oneself, uh, with logics outside of oneself. But the thing is, the logics outside of oneself, aside from the universal communication logic, are themselves... Um, particular to their circumstances. So you can be as objective as you want with any given circumstance or any given any given bit of logic, any, any specific logic that you're dealing with, the logic of a, uh, like I said, like the restaurant's pantry filing system or, or reordering system or whatever. Or you can deal with a universal logic. And that's, that's what makes TI objective, is what Jung didn't get is, yes, it is the subject's logic rather than the object's logic, right? So the subject is using, is using a universal logic, though, not their own personal logic. So, yes, the subject, yeah, the subject is the source of logic when they're using TI, whereas the object is the source of the logic when you're using TE. But... TI also uses logic on objective data too. So in other words, words comprise objective data just like a vacuum cleaner does. The difference between words and a vacuum cleaner is the same logic always applies to words. Whereas each vacuum cleaner may have a slightly different logic to it, right? So that was the main point I wanted to make uh, starting this. It's not that there's no, there's no degree of objectivity to extroverted thinking. I never meant to say that, but what I pointed out before is that um, what's the use of the distinction between introverted and extroverted functions? Well, okay, so I mean, that's the other point, is if you want to take um, if you want to take Jung's definition of, of TI being subjective because it's of the subject or it's introverted or something, <laughs> well, then I think he's missing the point there about that there's an attention to TE it's an attention to an external logic, but that attention itself is not necessarily logical, right? Whereas the attention of TI is logical and the object of attention is also usually extroverted, uh, external you know, objective data. It can be something that's not objective. When, when we try to use TI to parse out our feelings, we're, not, we're using the, an objective calculus on something that we shouldn't use it on. So for example, if I say, well, you don't have good enough reason to feel that way, so your feelings aren't acceptable or are illegitimate, that's not a good way to use TI, and it's not going to be correct, really, in a global sense in that in that capacity, right? In order to logically need premises. 
So that's in order to do conditional logic. But there is a logic to to everything that, say, every machine, you know. Um, the, there's a logic to this, which is to say that if, if you want it to make sound, you just have to do anything to these strings. But if you want to, to make a specific sound, you have to push down in the right place, you know? So that, that's the logic of a guitar. It's not, it's not conditionally logical. I mean, you can turn it into conditionals like I just did, but it's, um, it nevertheless has its own logic. To play the guitar is, is not to learn the logic of anything else, right? The only other kinds of things that have the same logic as the guitar are other guitars. You should be TIing with objectively observable truths, right? Conditional logic only matters if it correctly corresponds with reality. Well, that's a very SETI perspective on things, uh, Legends Fall, to say that conditional logic only matters if it corresponds correctly with reality. The thing is, conditional logic matters because it tells us whether or not, not whether or not somebody's correct, but whether we not whether or not we ought to afford them the status of correct. So it's like you can say whatever illogical shit you want, but when you're advocating for something, then we need to check to make sure that your advocacies are justified with good good reasoning, which is to say they're consistent within themselves. So for example, we check this is this is one thing we check against. We check against hypocrisy, right? This is one way that TI plays out in the real world that matters to people, whether they're TI people or not. So a, a non-TI person might be just fine with with strict mask laws that, that force everybody, that take control of everybody's face. I was typing somebody the other day, uh, and I asked them the question, so what do you think if I am advocating in favor of a, of a law that requires everyone to wear a hat on Wednesday because... Uh, it lowers skin cancer rates. And they're like, sounds like a good idea. Um, it's in a totally honest way, you know, like as soon as I mentioned that there's going to be some saving lives or whatever, they just, oh, no matter how oppressive or ridiculous it is, the thing is, but even, even non-TI people will recognize hypocrisy. So they may be fine with this law that forces everybody to wear a hat on Wednesdays, but they're not going to be fine if the lawmakers themselves don't wear one. Right? So true progress, that's, that's a good example of what reality is. The reality is there's a law that forces people to wear all this, these masks. Another reality could be that the lawmakers themselves are the, the most adherent to it, have the most respect for it. Or it could be that in this instance, we caught a lawmaker not wearing a hat on a Wednesday. Right? So in that instance, whether or not the, the lawmaker wore the hat on that Wednesday would depend on some sort of physical evidence, like a photograph or video or whatever, that shows, in fact, that, that she did not have the hat on, right? So, it, it, to some extent, when you're talking about reality, what we're talking about is is objective data. There's objective data, and then there are objective calculi, okay? Objective calculi are simply disinterested calculi where you're trying to determine what was stand scrutiny, not what might be or whatever else, right? Right. I used to try to fit them into the mold of objective versus subjective, which had obvious problems and now it's bonked as a consequence. But I still think there's something there in the in the, the meta functions carry the implicit assumption that other people agents are able and willing to engage in them, which makes them more universal. Right. I mean the thing is correspondence doesn't substantiate logic. I don't think anybody was trying to substantiate logic with correspondence. No, lo logic is implicit to grammar. Uh, it's, it's sort of axiomatically so. It, it's implicit to the fact that we have words such as and, or, and if, you know. So there's, there's, it's because, well, sure, like, okay, so, what Legend Fall says there, and, and look at look at the video of clips I did the other day showing T.I. Polar. That woman gave a very a nuanced answer. I, I put the most nuanced part, too, so I try not to make her look bad, you know. But uh, she gave a very nuanced answer to a T.I. question. 
she said, well, it's not really the case that only meow, 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 meow. And it's not really the case that there's not any other ways that you could survive or not avoid moving. So, in other words, she just said, these kinds of questions are pointless because it's never corresponding adequately to any reality. We all know that a, a hypothetical, a hypothetical, right, doesn't need to correspond to a reality to be tested for validity. So there's, there's no need to, to correspond to anything to be valid. That's the beautiful thing, a universal, universal thing about the logic. You might say it's arbitrary, or you might call it axiomatic or whatever, but uh, as a matter of fact, validity is as it is, not because of agreement by people, but because uh, the same reason that, you know, you can, you can call two and two and four different names, but regardless, the idea that, that, Two and two add up to four is sort of implicitly there. Oh, yeah, you're right about that, Rain. I made a mistake, I guess. My bad. If I did say that, then I definitely was wrong and I made a mistake. I do, I'm not, I'm not as rigorous uh, in my TI as a TI DOM, and I do occasionally mess it up like that. Facts aren't secondary? I mean, what do you mean? It depends on the, the situation, right? So, whether or not facts are central to any given argument or secondary to it depends on what's being argued, obviously. Uh, like... When I, when I say facts, I guess I mean bits of objective data that everybody can reference easily enough, like a statistic or something, right? I mean, there's, there's, two, there's two elements to any, any fact, which is, one, the, the fact itself, two, how it links to the framework of whatever argument you're making. So, so it's like there's an interpretive element to it, regardless in any advocacy. You gotta remember that all of these things that we're doing here, what you're doing, what I'm doing, what Hambone's doing, whatever, blah, 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 it's all advocacy based. In other words, we're trying to say, these are the right words for the right things and blah, 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 blah. And, and the ultimate the reality is when we are dealing with those kinds of things, advocacies and words based stuff, then that's when TI is great. It's perfect because we can actually figure out who's most right, who's most wrong by basically getting rid of everything that's wrong and whatever is left over is right. Um, I'm going to smoke a cigarette and let Rachel talk for a minute. I'm sure she is. So if she's like talking about it as well, it's probably not related to this. What do I want to talk about? It's a good question. Well... Your dad's coming into town soon. Yeah, my dad is coming into town soon. Uh, he's coming into town on the 20th. Hey, Hambone, how are you doing? I forget. Like, did you hurt yourself last time we spoke? Are you feeling better if you did feel, if you did hurt yourself? I hope you are. <laughs> Do you touch yourself when you're feeling lonely? Hambone? I believe that's the song to the Divinal, the lyrics of the Divinal song. <laughs> oh, yes. Is that what it says? Oh, he sprained both his ankles. That's right. Sprained They're mostly healed. I'm glad. You had a double ankle sprain, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what SD Polar will do, you know? It, what? I just sounded like really, don't you know? That's right. Some, it's true. Something. Like yeah, well, sprains will do that to you. They have the longest, uh, they take the longest to heal. A good meme would be, anyone, I sprained my ankle. Anyone. Oh, which which ankle? INTP. Both. both. <laughs> <laughs> I was, both, and I was just walking down the sidewalk. Oh my gosh. That sucks so much. I told you about my um, my hiking trip I went, that I went on, and I sprained my ankle on the hiking trip because there was wet leaves, and I was just clumsy. 
and that really hurt. And then I sprained my wrist playing soccer. I like tried to save the ball. I was goalie and I tried to save the ball in like a really dumb way. And I sprained my wrist. Are you usually, are you, you like ultra cautious? I feel like I try to be ultra cautious because I am so clumsy. I'm more cautious than I used to be. I used to be really incautious. You know, the thing, one thing I want to talk about is where it is that the, the term subjective got such a bad rap. Yeah, really. So I get what Jung is saying. That when you're talking about where the logic is, with extroverted thinking, the logic is outside of the self. In other words, the self isn't having to use any logic. They're having to figure out the logic of whatever it is they're dealing with. And the logic of TI is within the self. That is to say, it relies on the individual self to be able to competently use the objective logic of the yes. world. And so... But nowadays, subjectivity is considered uh, a weakness. It, it, it's considered synonymous with wrong. It's considered uh, um, the thing that always gets in the way of, of science or something. It, it's weird, you know? It has to do with science and secular values. Well, yeah, I mean, values, yeah. That, that's the whole point of validity, true progress, is that you can replace the words so they don't have any truth value at all with just letters, right? If A, then B, and not B, therefore not A. And it's, it's always true no matter what, I mean, it's always valid no matter what words you put in there. Depending on which words you put in there, it may or may not be true. But the point is, if it's not valid, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means we shouldn't afford the argument any weight based on the fact that it's not correctly argued. So, in other words, if I say all pigs, uh, all humans, uh, all humans um, speak French, I don't speak French, therefore I'm not human. It's false in its premise that all humans speak French. It's true in its premise that I don't speak French, and it's false in its conclusion that I am therefore not human, but it is valid nevertheless, right? So the thing is, let's say you have one that's completely true. Um, all pigs oink, I don't oink. Um, all, all pigs oink, I oink, therefore, uh, that's false too, okay, uh, one that's completely true. Um, yeah. If you if Uptown Funk is played at the wedding, you'll get up and dance. <laughs> <laughs> Uptown Funk well, that, is playing. That's true, but I'm trying to do a silly <laughs> So, uh, like, um, only humans speak English. Um, I'm human, therefore I speak English. That is one that is true. Everything in there is true, but it's invalid. So the point is this. Ah. That it's not that the conclusion is wrong. If something's invalid, it's just that we shouldn't agree that the conclusion is right because of the argument, right? So there's a fallacy of fallacies, which says it's simply because something's fallacious, it's wrong. Fallacious reasoning doesn't create something that's wrong, it creates something that's failed to affirm itself. AF has the burden for a reason. It's those who are trying to assert that they are correct who have the burden to, to establish that. And those who negate either succeed or fail to, to negate that. So in, in other words, that argumentation either is always doing something and we can't we can't think of it or objectivity without realizing that core notion right there. The bad and good argumentation is always doing something. So in other words, um, if I'm making a bad argument in favor of the correct position, it, then I am doing a great disservice to the correct position because a lot of people will fallaciously conclude that because that person's arguments are fallacious, their conclusion must be wrong. So, in other words, subjectivity and correctness are very loosely linked, right? But the problem is people don't understand that fundamentally, um, TI is about negating that which fails to attain legitimacy. Okay? 
number one thing to remember is TI is about negating that which fails to attain legitimacy. Now, it's necessary to use it to affirm things like I'm affirming right now. I'm affirming a clear understanding of the things, right? Um, and my, my understanding of it is correct and people should use it, etc., etc., etc. Which functions are you using when you check premise against reality of a conditional logic statement? Well, I mean, SE probably, you know. Um, it's it's TISE thing. So it's like I, when you check premises against reality, that's got to be an SETI thing or a TE thing, maybe. I don't know. I don't do that very often because um, usually it's very rare that people can correctly enough make arguments that can withstand good scrutiny because it's not. It's, it's not easy. Um, you know, it's like, it's like for every, every type has its little area of mastery, right? And the thing is, even then, whether they attain real mastery of that area depends a lot on their particular experience. So it's like my, my area of mastery, which links to my particular experience is in sound argumentation so that means it's both valid and true uh, which means it makes limited claims the thing is i'm in a world where almost nobody has the level of skill that i have at doing exactly what it is i say i'm doing which is making sound argumentation and certainly nobody in this field does so it's it's frustrating for me because i have uh I encounter a lot of people who who are way down at the bottom of the mountain trying to explain to me how to manage these uh, sh sharp faces, sharp cliff faces up at the top, you know, and they're not even, haven't even begun to walk up the mountain. What exactly is my field? Well, I'm a debate coach. So you might say rhetoric, argumentation, dialectic, philosophy. Um, being correct about things is my field, ultimately. So, uh, the thing is, what, what does it mean to be correct? Well, if you go into a court case, for example, uh, well, I, I didn't say I'm the absolute best in my field. I just said that around here, in, in the cognitive function community, I'm, I'm the best at constructing constructing models and understanding things and, and correctly delineating which arguments withstand scrutiny and which don't. And ultimately, that's what cognitive functions is when it's properly dealt with. It's an affirmation. I am making an affirmation that I say, this model of attention that Jung initiated and has been messed around with by lots of people is properly understood like this and when properly understood does explain a lot of things about human personality more correctly than any other psychological model. When understood correctly, it does replace the fundamental paradigm under which psychology has been misapplying itself heretofore. So, and I've discussed this in other videos, and I don't want to go over all that again, but, um, but the thing is, if you were to, to create a, a means of, of testing, training, and determining the best philosophers, that means would be coaching and competition flow debate. And I'm pretty damn good at it. So uh, I don't think I'm the best in the country, um, but I have a, a really strong lineage behind me of, of successful debaters, successful assistant coaches. Uh, they've gone on to be big coaches themselves. And, uh, and it's very, and I, I'm very objective about the cases I encounter. So as, as a coach, I judge a lot of rounds. I see a lot of casework, and it's very rare that I'm impressed with casework that other coaches are doing, you know? So it's like, I, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not fooling myself. Be, I read a comment earlier today that says, you know, Eric, you're so, de you're so determined to be right. You, you want so badly to be right that blah, blah, blah. That is not correct. Hi, Beepy. That is not correct. I, it's much more correct to say I very badly don't like being wrong. <laughs> so that's why that's I right. embrace every instance where I am and get rid of it as quickly as possible. Um, I, I don't like having to defend my my positions on on professional legitimacy grounds 
but I recognize that a lot of people do judge that way. So then I typically will say, okay, well, this is why these are the sort of this is the sort of training and life experience I've had that makes me atypically capable of handling this shit. But people don't like to hear that either because then they think I'm bragging and being arrogant. Um, it's a catch-22 I've encountered before. People want to shit on me or doubt me or make make claims to the contrary. You know, things about this whole Jung thing, right? Well, Jung says it's subjective, so it must be subjective. You can have never observed the objective world in any way. <laughs> Change your mind. I mean, what are you looking at right now? I mean, what the thing is, what's the objective world? Remember, there's objective data and there's objectivity in decision making. That's it. So, what are you talking about, the objective world? You mean objective data? You can't observe objective data? I mean, we know you can observe objective data because we can test it, right? So, I can show this up here and say, what is this? And people can independently of each other, without consulting with each other, all agree that it's a remote control. Now, in contrast, if I say, now, what am I feeling emotionally right now? Well, that's not objective data. You don't have access to that. And you won't all agree necessarily about that. Although I'm making some display, what display I am making comprises objective data that everyone can look at. But some part of the information you need about how I'm feeling is subjective data, which is to say it's inside of me privately. I can't share it with you. You can't experience it with me. It relies on experience to understand it. So if that doesn't change your mind, then you're not being logical or reasonable. I mean, the thing is, what I would say death by monkeys as well is you define some terms. So we'll see if uh, we'll see if you're worth even dealing with. Right. A good logical thinker ha disagrees or agrees because they've defined terms in certain ways that indicate certain things. That's how it works, right? The point is, you need to define what you mean by objective. Okay? So if you mean anything by it, then in fact, it is a thing that you can distinguish from something else. Right? If you don't mean anything by it, then it has no distinction from anything else. So you have to decide if you want it to be defined or not define it at all. If you don't want it to define it at all, there's no point in talking to you. If you want to define it, then go ahead. And of course, <coughs> if nothing's objective and everything's subjective, then you take away all the meaning of the term, right? It no longer means anything at all. Just like saying every direction's up. Teaching people the basics about thinking. Did you? Yeah, sure. So obviously... Good evening, Steely Bob. Hi, Steely Bob. Obviously, this is a topic I've covered many times Thank before. You. I'm sure I'll cover it many times again as well. Um, yeah, it's just, just being a troll. <laughs> oh my wow. god, I have been in that hole too, Death by Monkeys. I mean, yeah, if you, <laughs> if you want to just sort of and I your way out of any kind yeah. of reasonable thinking, then yeah, go ahead. That, but that, that's, what, that's what it's called when you don't have enough TI in the mix. Alright? It's like, uh... That kind of spiritualist nonsense is not going to meaningfully discourage. It's not any kind of meaningful psychology. Psychology no, requires us to understand things. And that means we need a model of psychology that, that not only explains why you were listening to Alan Watts, but it also explains why I'm negating it, why I'm explaining to you why that's dumb, why Rachel's agreeing with me quietly by nodding, uh, explains why Legends Fall is fixated on, on the the reality check against premises, which is, provides me a lot of clarity about how S, E, and T, I go. 
that makes good sense. That's why they're um, executives rather than meta analysts. So all of these things make perfectly good sense. And most importantly, perhaps, it's desperately needed. We desperately need a meta frame. That, in other words, every philosopher from the beginning of time has wanted to explain everything except why they're writing that philosophy book. Right? Yeah. It, it, it's, been, it's been a deficit in human thought since the beginning of time because objectivity purportedly removes the self from the equation. Real objectivity does not exclude the self. It includes the self just as though it were any other object. So, in other words, I am just as much a slave to my type as you are to yours as, as Legends Fall is to his. And um, we can exercise more or less free will by sort of learning about and, um, and recognizing when our reflexive attentional habits aren't well suited for the circumstance. But that's about as much as we can do, you know. Maybe learning, um, maybe learning about who to defer to in certain circumstances is a wise choice. Like who who is actually competent here? I feel like if I were to, that's a good. If I were on a de deserted island with a bunch of people, I'd know very clearly who should do what and who should be in charge of what. Yeah, I said that before too. That you would be very good at. Delegating. Delegating all the delegating. tasks. Delegating, yeah, yeah, delegating. Um. So I mean, that that's the key thing is like if you look at all those philosophers in the past, they're all talking about the nature of reality and the nature of humanity and stuff. But why are they talking about? It? If they really understand the nature of reality and humanity, then explain explain to us why they're doing what they're doing right now. Well, only cognitive functions really allows you to explain that. Everything else doesn't explain it. It might correlate it to attributes or something, but that's not an explanation of any kind of mechanics. So it's pretty powerful, if you think about it, to, to, to recognize that cognitive functions represent a paradigm shift that humanity desperately needs because it's been suffering under the wrong fundamental paradigm for all of humanity's time, heretofore, prior to Hume coming up with this shit. And even then, in the aftermath of that, it really took till MBTI for things to become popularized, and MBTI got it wrong. Then, you know, and then somebody with too much NETI going on, like too much NE in their TI, comes up with uh, socionics. Before mm -hmm. you know it, you got Model G, Model F, Model whatever, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Look, there's one correct understanding of the thing, one correct explanation of the thing, right? And it's not that complicated. And it's not endlessly, endlessly uh, divisible, divisible. And, you know, it's like if you let your your intuition run wild, you end up with a million subtypes like Dave Superpowers and masculine and feminine and blasting and playing and sleeping and a bunch of other fucking garbage. Or you end up like socionics where you've got infinite numbers of dichotomies, none of which are delineated between actual... Uh, function matters, process matters True. versus um, versus just behavioral correlates or whatever. They don't know what kind of arguments they're making, so they can't make them well. You know? Yeah, they make them very negatively. Like I don't understand. I think the glorification of the dual partnership is just like it. Obviously, like I mean, I think he got. I mean, I, th I think there's parts of it that are right, but there are also parts that's just like, oh my god, like, can we even get along as a, as, like, a species with all these, like, negative parts? Like... So, so let's use cognitive functions to explain death by monkeys quote there. That's very much um, an anti-extroverted intuition quote. It's saying that uh, identity always stays the same, very pro-NI, right? Whoever wrote that quote and whoever invented Zen Buddhism was very much about being NI as much as possible. In the moment with the SE, but NI open to receiving information and knowing what it is identity-wise. And that other meanings created to the contrary were somehow less than 
the knowing of the identity itself. Now, obviously, with cognitive functions, we recognize that as simply an example of cognitive function bias. It's, it's an NI person putting their biased worldview onto the rest of everybody and assuming that, they, that everybody else is the way they are and that what helps them is going to help everybody else. So um, that's the beautiful thing about cognitive functions. It subsumes shit like that, right? It explains why that guy wrote that. Right. Like almost everybody else, it's just an example of cognitive function bias. Now, the one place, of course, where it's appropriate to to insist that a certain cognitive function be prioritized, there are certain things where that's appropriate. With law or philosophy, it's appropriate to insist that we use TI. In other words, the things actually make sense for everybody universally and not just for the people who want to be like this way or that way. So, you know, OP doesn't make sense for everybody universally. Socionics doesn't either. Because why? They're all negatable. If you get into the argumentation of it, there's nothing there. It's just garbage. See, it just doesn't make any sense. Blah, blah, blah. People who try to combine a bunch of random pieces that they like and feel like without testing them for, for they fit together under the same framework, it's all garbage. Right? But if you do it correctly, it's the single explanation that makes everything clear. Yeah, I mean, since I've been typed correctly, I could say I, there's this, like, stableness to who I am that I didn't have before when I was, like, searching for it. So, it's nice. <laughs> um, there's a, uh, you know, the thing is... <sighs> I'll make I'll make a video. Uh, I've I've made plenty of videos about this topic before, but like the the gist of it is this: it's pretty straightforward. Four of the functions are communication functions. Four of the functions are experience functions, and everybody has three of one and one of the other. Okay, in some order. So, the reason we have one of these configurations is. Uh, no, I didn't completely misunderstand the quote. I understood it completely. I, and I also understood the subtext of it, what you were trying to do with it. I just didn't acknowledge that directly because I don't typically acknowledge passive-aggressive shit directly. So, no, you're never going to... No, I didn't misunderstand it. Not at all, to be clear. So, anyway, the gist of it is this. The mechanics of the thing are as follows. If we were going to model it so that we could simulate it with a computer, we need to do so by um, breaking it down into fields, objects, and vectors. Um, the fields, in this instance, would be the external metaphysical field, which is what we're on right now, talking, where our attention is. We're attending to the words and meanings being expressed. Um, the internal metaphysical field, where you keep your thoughts and ideas and think when you're not saying it stuff out loud. The internal physical field, when you get a stomach ache or something. And the external physical field, like stuff that you can bump into, right? So, uh, um, okay, Death Row Monkeys, I'm probably am a little fired up right now. It's like, when I read people saying the same stupid shit over and over again in these comment sections about objectivity and subjectivity, and not listening to me, right? Like, not responding to what I'm saying. So this is why I wanted to stress in this video where Jung was right. Jung was right in that TE deals with objects, it deals with logics that are outside of the self. So in that regard, the logics of the thing that you're dealing with outside of the self, whether it be how to organize a business uh, with its with its um, with its scheduling of employees for hours and stuff, or whether it be a how to fix a vacuum cleaner, whatever the specific logic is, is outside of the self. So in that regard, TE deals with objective logics. But it's, the thing is, that's not what people mean by objective. That's only one half of the equation. So yes, TE deals with objective data, but it deals with it in a subjective fashion which is to say it determines how it wants to interface the logic according to its interests, not according to some universal standard, right? And, uh, <coughs> um, <coughs> whereas TI also deals with objective data. 
Now note, some words I might think and not say out loud. And those words, therefore, are subjective data. So I get to do a lot of my objective calculus inside of my head privately. So I don't get to, I don't have to express a bunch of wrong things. I've already eliminated them in my head before I start talking, right? Um, but the thing is, if I were to speak those words out loud, then they'd become objective data. And somebody here would say, no, that doesn't make any sense, Eric. You're wrong because of meow, 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 and challenge what I'm saying, right? Well, it, and this is part, part of what I want to say. People think, everybody thinks they want to be the smartest guy in the room, the most correct guy in the room, the one who, who knows everything and is explaining everything to people. Um, everything, everybody thinks they want to be that guy. Why? It's fucking torture. I tell you, that person doesn't get you a job, like... Asking questions. You know, it's like it's not fun. It, it, th think about think about what I got going on here, right? It's like I'm definitely, by a large margin, the most correct person about cognitive functions. Mm -hmm. I'm the most disciplined in what I'm saying about it. I'm the most objective in my evaluation of my own methodologies. I'm the most. Uh, experienced in terms of actually typing people in basically the same way for a long time and actually being able to check to see if these things prove themselves and stuff by far and yet every other person in typology from Joyce Wang to um, Heart of Michi to Megan Lavoda to C.S. Joseph to uh, I mean, like everybody uh, who, who's come into cognitive functions after me and started talking about it has surpassed me already. And, and it's very short order, usually. So, that's what you get, that, that's what you get for being right. Being, being the most right means you're a little bit ahead of the curve. Being ahead of the curve is not a good thing because it means you don't get rewarded for being correct. I was just going to ask you, like, if that, if you feel that because you're the curved surfer and you're tri-type like do you do you feel like you are you are usually you are ahead of the curve you are well the thing is hey Winston's mom obviously there's a need for me to express myself in ways that are are uh, more popular I mean, I'm, the thing is, Dealey Bob, you can't say that being right is basically the same as being convincing. Um, what you can say is that being right means successfully withstanding all scrutiny. So in other words, being right means that when both parties make their arguments, one person is clearly standing, one person isn't, and for good reasons, you know. Yeah, I appreciate you guys who are here, by the way. Um, I, I do greatly appreciate uh, those of you who do like to watch me and be here and communicate with me and stuff. And I don't mean to be... Of course, you're the only people I could take it out on, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't dispute that, that one, being right isn't always enough. One, must, one also needs to be convincing. But the thing is here, I don't think anybody's claimed I'm not convincing uh, they're just not interested in being convinced right uh, so it's like I, to the extent that I wanted to be more successful I'd have to I'd have to be more NI and less TI which doesn't necessarily mean being wrong but which means subjecting yourself to a lot of um, bullshit scrutiny <sighs> Oh, you explanation of the framework chart. So basically, agents, um, pe people act as either agents, subjects, or objects. Okay, in any given moment, in any given snapshot of of time, somebody might be observing two other people, one of whom is kicking a third. Obviously, the observer is the agent, 
the kicker is the, the subject and the kicky is the object, right? So in order to understand human attention then, we need to recognize the fact that from an external perspective or from an internal perspective, uh, we have three kinds of expressions of self, agent, subject, object, observer, doer, done to. Okay, so once we recognize that, then we've got these four fields, right? external metaphysical internal metaphysical external physical internal physical and so attention basically works like this extroverted intuition puts information on the external metaphysical field mostly or on the external internal metaphysical field those are the two fields in which it operates um ex extroverted sensing puts information on the external physical field uh or on the internal physical field so you can hit yourself for example um the introverted sensing gets information, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, receives information or retains also, it's a knowledge function, retains and receives information from the internal physical field and the internal metaphysical field. The introverted intuition uh, receives and, and knows about information from both the external fields, the external metaphysical and the external physical field. Um, the uh, TI and FI, uh, TI, it does its deliberation on the external metaphysical field and on the internal metaphysical field, and that's getting information. So directionality, if we're gonna simulate this on computers, it's putting are the action functions, getting are the deliberation functions, receiving are the um, knowledge functions. These all have correlates with how the internet works, right? Um, and then there's an interface functions, which are TE and FE, which are basically ways of, of doing a metaphysical physical exchange well the difference between the phys metaphysical and physical you could just call those communication and experience as well so there's your own body's experience versus your own body's communication in your head there's other people's communication and then there's other people's experience right sure um the thing is rain well no i can give you one example i can give you an example of TI on the extroverted metaphysical field. I'm doing it right now and answering your question that you asked and parsing out what it means and why it's why I can't demonstrate the other one. To demonstrate the other example would be would be this is all going on in my head, okay? It's not being said out loud. It would be like, I wonder if maybe this correlates with that. Like I wonder if maybe this thing that Rachel just did is indicative of INFJs in general. No, because that would be contrary to... Uh, it must just be a Rachel thing. That would be me doing it in my head, right? Well, I am like a weird type of INFJ, I would say. Being 741, I don't think... The thing is, this isn't a, a broad framework. What I'm saying is this. It's like, if we wanted to simulate people like the Sims, but have them act like people based on cognitive function configurations, we would understand each configuration as one strategy towards the following. And, um, and the following is making your map and your experience as close together as possible. So in other words, to minimize surprise, basically. Um, <clears throat> Gen X, the problem is when I told you that I got something wrong. And that's why I haven't used that is because it's wrong. I didn't want to tell you to redo it because I got some things wrong on it. Uh, the problem is like, I now recognize that NI, NI is on both external fields. It, it's, it's an externally focused form of attention. NI is about receiving information from outside, right? SI is about receiving information from inside. So, um, Okay, all right, all right, Jenex, I will. I was embarrassed to tell you, so I didn't tell you. Uh, it's third slot FE kicking in there. Um, I want can differentiate rhetoric and TI. TI can be used either for rhetorical purposes, which is to say to win an argument, or for dialectical purposes, which is to say to figure out what's best, most correct. So I think that the ultimate test of a cognitive function model should be it's presume it's at least it's at least imaginably simulatable on a computer okay well for example if i'm remembering what i did yesterday 
um, I have to think in my head, okay, what did I do yesterday? Yesterday we, we, what did I do yesterday? Uh, oh, I know, we, uh, I was napping and then my clients called and they wanted me to work with their kid and I went up to their house and I went back here and, and then uh, went to bed fairly early. So I have to think inside of myself what, what, what it was I did yesterday, right? That's how I receive information from inside. I basically put in a call to my memory and say, what did I do yesterday? And then I remember it. Um, that's, that's what it is to, to use SI to receive information from inside. Whereas NI doesn't, doesn't focus like that. Now, that doesn't mean that NI DOMs never look to their own memories. They have NI1 and they have NI8. It does mean that uh, and they have SI8. It does mean that ENFJs almost never look to their memories. So, and, and it, it's a habit of attention, right? They simply don't, they're habitually unaccustomed to using that, that attentional manner. I'm saying that TI can attend either to thoughts you've thought out yourself or they can attend to somebody else's thoughts. You're using your TI on my thoughts right now, right? My words. Who's so that? it's like, it's not, TI doesn't just work on your own words, it works on other people's words too. I was just gonna ask, how does, um, what's a Rachel thing versus an INFJ thing? Um. Curious. It's funny I didn't have any example in mind. I was just, it was just uh, the example you use. I mean, I said Rachel, but I have much more examples of with Kimberly <laughs> because I thought that all the time with her whether she was this is a Kimberly thing or an ISFJ thing because she was so damaged. No, no, the the act of of talking ideas onto the external field would be extroverted intuition. If you were gonna simulate it, right? Now obviously, by simulating it and, and breaking it down into such put, get, receive kind of things, we are we are simplifying things or making it being a little bit reductive probably. But um, in other words, if we, but, but the other thing to say is that if we can't do that, then we're not we're not using a system that's worth even talking about, right? Then you're just talking about Eckert Tolle shit or whatever. It's no longer it's no longer meaningful. If we can't simulate it and test it in that fashion, it's not meaningful. So anyway, the uh, the interface functions T E and F E would seem to uh, would seem to pay attention to. Uh, The I, I'm not sure about T E and F E still as far as their field engagements because there are interface functions that sort of convert shit. Like T E seems to convert stuff, the logic of the external uh, world into an ordinality, uh, an, uh, a subjective logic that says we should do mea first, mea second, mea third. I don't know what it is. Express it to me. What do you know? What it is? What is his argument? That's cool, horse mumbler. I mean, if it's if it's a real argument, you should be able to articulate it without in, in a in a few a few chats worth of text at most. If it's a real argument. As I indicated, the 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 reason one might be confused and use the word subjective about TI is that whereas TE okay well it's true that um in any log in logic in conditional logic that that logic can be valid but come from a false premise leading to a false conclusion, even though the reasoning is valid, that argument would be called unsound because it's valid but not true. Okay, so 
sound means valid and true valid means valid and uh, and false or true means false and true so it's it's not the case that the fact that, that there's a difference between soundness and validity is a problem that's one of the beautiful things about TI it can distinguish between those two things right sound and false it doesn't make, make any sense it can be valid and false but to be sound, it needs to be valid and true. Now, the thing is, it is the case that statements to which we afford the status truth, that's not a permanent status, but that doesn't make the logic subjective. It makes the reasoning objective for sure, and the, uh, the conclusions more likely to be true when the reasoning is directed towards things that are appropriate for that kind of reasoning. So in other words, in each of its respective forms, each of the functions is where is the one that ought to be used, quote unquote, if you were looking for an ideal situation. So if I'm looking to choose between Brad, Joe, or Bob, which one's gonna be my boyfriend, then I shouldn't be using TI. I maybe should be using TE, or maybe I should be using FI. It really depends on, I guess, somewhat your frame of reference. Is NI knowing still experiential? No, NI knowing is not experiential. NI is, um, is the communicative kind of knowing because everything that it knows is something that can be communicated. In other words, it knows identities. Yes, yeah, sound and false is impossible because sound means valid and true. So it is the case, and we did discuss this shortly before you got here, Winterbird, that one can have something that's true and invalid, you know? Only humans speak English. I'm human, therefore I speak English. That's invalid, but completely true. Um, that, that's not a, uh, that doesn't make TI subjective. It makes it objective, because we can all agree that that's the case. It's not valid. In other words, it's not the case that just because only humans speak English, and just because I speak English doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to be human, because um, not all humans speak English. I'm sorry, and just because I'm human doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to speak English, because while it is true that only humans speak English, not all humans speak English. Doesn't football report usually in August, right? Uh, yeah, well, we're also coming up on the Olympics soon. Yep, Olympics, and, um, I saw the Home Run Derby was on, and usually when that, that and the, uh, what is it, the All-Star? The All-Star game. Game, um, that's when, like, baseball really counts. We were watching a little bit of the soccer game between the United States and Canada, but Rachel and I both felt like live streaming instead. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be a particularly long stream. I know we need to do some cleaning, and uh, and I'm not really feeling that at the moment. Oh my god! I I know I'm not either. Hi, Shibo. Your English is fine. Your hello is spelled beautifully. Move this so much we're gonna see. I I have not seen Succession. I don't know about Eric. Have I ever watched Succession? No. Yeah, how is the little one, Winston's mom? What's the little one's name? Here's the thing, Horace Mumbler. I am trying. I'm really making a serious effort to do the TE stuff you say I'm not doing. I've been trying for a while now, and I'd like to see that you should be able to see some some differences. And it is slowly starting to to build a few subscribers here and there. But um, is it possible for SI DOMs to look like NI DOMs? How do you tell between the two? Uh, I mean, if you live with them for a while, it's easy to tell the difference. Like Rachel. Oh. Instead of having, instead of having like habitual things that Rachel says, she'll, she's much more likely to echo what I say in some, or some <laughs> variant of it. Yeah, I find it easy. 
Uh, whereas if she were an SI dom, she'd probably have her own little bucket of little sayings that she'd bust out more mm-hmm. often. Yep. No, I haven't seen that one word, but listen, it's it's very uh, it's very straightforward. We can mean the terms to mean various things. Okay, if you mean of the subject, well, the problem with that is every attentional manner is of the subject, so it would be non-unique to TI, right? So every attentional manner would be subjective, and that's not the case. Okay? <clears throat> the bottom line is. In the most common usage of the word objective and subjective, we mean an interested or a disinterested calculus. That is to say, trying to exclude your own bias or trying to get what you want, you know? Um. And, and under that definition, there's no way anybody could call TI subjective. Now, if you want to call it subjective because it's of the subject, then it's non-unique. That's non-unique. All other cognitive functions have the same property. If you want to call it subjective because it's introverted, well, why would it be that all introverted functions are subjective and all extroverted functions are objective? And if that were the case, um, then uh, why? And the answer would be, well, because you're paying attention to something outside of yourself. Okay, well, I agree. If you're paying some attention to something outside of yourself, you're paying attention to objective data. But paying attention to objective data does not mean making an objective calculus about objective data. And if you're not distinguishing between those two things, then you're not being real when talking about the subject, unless you've got better definitions or something. I've never heard anybody meaningfully contradict anything I'm saying here, ever. Yes, SI love, users love saying things over and over again, like eat plenty of cheese. Yeah, I have a whole bucket of uh, little sayings that I repeat. Uh, you know, I'll, I usually, when I see the cat, I'll say, uh, uh, kitty freshness pants, or, but there's, I have a lot of different ones, but, you know, among them is kitty freshness pants. Bad external source, objective, valid reasoning, subjective. Well, I mean, the thing is, you can't have a bad. You can't have bad objective data. Um, it's either not actually objective data, which which means to say, like if I publish if I publish some study results, but my methodology is bad, it's the totality of it is objective data as long as I'm able to do the methodology critique, right? But if if the methodology proves sound, and the data is there, the data is objectively what it is for everybody. What makes it objective um, is that everybody can see the data and look at it the same. It looks the same to everybody. This is objective data because everybody can see it and see what it is, right? And it's, um, I'm not hiding it and making you guess at all. And it's not, it's not something inherently personal or private to me. So, uh, so in other words, you can have bad analysis of objective data, but the thing is, that's, that's where what makes that analysis either bad or good is whether or not the TI is good or bad. So in that regard, a uh, bad analysis of objective data is a subjective analysis of, of objective data, but, um, or a, a failure to be adequately objective in your analysis of it. Remember that an objective analysis of objective data only produces a conditional conclusion. All TI acknowledges that the premises might be wrong, but that that's why it's the it's the logic of communication, not the logic of stuff in the actual world. Objectivity doesn't mean correctness also. Don't forget that. Uh, just because you're objective doesn't mean you're more correct than the subjective person. There's a lot of factors that go into play, right? <coughs> if you have a false premise, then the, the thing is, look, remember also, again, that all arguments are doing something. You're either affirming something, which is to say changing, want, in, insisting that people should change the status quo. I am currently affirming cognitive functions as the status quo that should be uh, adopted instead of the existing psychology paradigm. (sighs) 
But the point is, because I'm affirming something, it is the case that if I'm predicating things on bad premises, that those who choose to challenge what I'm saying will point that out to me. You know, they'll say this this premise is false. True. Um, that's why I I build my ideas from a very few central axioms, right? So that um, everything's defensible all the way down. But regardless of its defensibility, from simply a utility perspective, in my observations of the world and people, nothing comes close to explaining things nearly as well as cognitive functions. Because what are we trying to really explain? We're trying to really explain why people are the way they are. More than anything else, that's what we're trying to explain. And the only, the only framework that it does that adequately is cognitive functions. You know, existing frameworks have typically been that all people are basically the same and deviation between individuals is the consequence of, uh, of nurture stuff. You know, you should, we, we just need to, to train them better or to be more normal or that it's the result of some sort of disorder like ADHD or whatever. Um, of course, the, the reality is, if you look at the big five, it's saying everybody's the same, but different people have different amounts of these attributes, like openness, agreeableness, conscientiousness, etc., right? Except we don't, those things aren't just attributes, right? People don't actually have those attributes. What people have is a complicated relationship between creativity and organization, for example. And to, to reduce that to low conscientiousness is absurd, right? It's missing the point. Those things are on, it's like saying, um, I mean, because conscientious is definitely a normatively positive word. And so to not acknowledge that yeah. it's, it's on the end of an axis of, of sort of ideation versus archive of paying attention to ideas and words and meanings or paying attention to your own experience of your body and stuff so i i lived with kimberly for a long time did this around her for a long time at the end of two and a half years she was still asking me what ti meant what fe what does fe stand for again what's that one mean because she didn't really put any effort into learning it and she doesn't naturally pick up on those kind of metaphysical things. As an NE DOM, as an NI DOM, Rachel and I just naturally think in those terms and and find uh, Well, I, I mean I know, BB Raw, you're right about that. Um I, when, I, when I live stream, it's usually because I feel the need to vent about something. It's not really to be convincing um, to people who may or may not be convincible. But I, I did come into this one with a slightly different angle, which is to say that here's where Jung was right. The logics that, TI, that TE attends to are external objective logics. So in other words, if I'm fixing the vacuum cleaner, the, the logic is objective in that if I don't put the pieces back together right, it won't work, you know? Uh, but that doesn't mean that the attentional manner is objective because the attentional manner, you could call it objective, I guess, and that is dealing with objective data, but it's really driven by the subjective. In other words, you know what you want me to look like the logic of how to get mia to mia is outside of you, is objective, but the fact that you want to get mia to mia is a subjective conclusion. So what end you reach and, and being satisfied by that conclusion is entirely subjective, rather than in TI where the end you reach, the conclusion, is an objective claim that people can dispute using the same objective reasoning.
Winterbird says, you sound so convincing in your explanation. I wonder why more no more YouTubers are agreeing with you in this. Are they too stuck on you, you think? Afraid to disagree with the master? Um, well, I mean, the thing is, I don't know why they're disagreeing with me because they've never meaningfully done so. I've yet to hear anybody make any good arguments against what I'm saying. You know? Uh, <coughs> why don't don't all the extroverted functions validate externally um, no not really like FE well I mean FE does uh, yeah TE does uh I mean, yeah, I, I guess that's true. I guess the, the, the thing is, I, well, let me put it this way. The only functions that really validate are FI and TI. So in other words, to validate whether your TE has been done correctly, you need to check your FI and say, is this what I wanted? Yes, okay, great. No, okay, it's not good. To validate, so for example, um, Here's an example of of validating uh, using objective data, but internal validation things. So when I when I was done with my clips video, I felt uh, pretty good that it was what I wanted to do. In other words, that my TE had gotten me from a bunch of random video stuff to this this tightly edited clips thing. My TE had done what I wanted to do. I had done the TE part pretty well. In other words, that I achieved what I wanted. When I published it, however, um, Rain left a comment that basically said, he gets what I was trying to do, but it didn't work. And I found that very depressing. And that's because what I really want is for everybody else to like it. So, um, Again, I'm validating with my FI in both instances as to as to whether it's good or not. Uh, you might say I, I what I didn't do and always have trouble doing is validating with my NI. Um, in other words, um, I don't trust my intuition when it comes to my own media when I'm first finished with it. I, I just can't I can't seem to know whether it's good or not. Or how good it is. However, um, you mean the the short clips one? Would right. you like some cheese? Thanks, darling. You're welcome. Well, all right. Let me let me demo something right now. So here's an exception, sort of, but not. Entirely an exception, I guess. But so there's this song that I've been working on, playing, practicing, that I'm quite smitten with. My NI on this one is saying that this song is special. Like, that if I were to execute it perfectly just with me playing guitar, and voice uh, in front of the green screen with uh, kind of a westerny background or something and maybe a hat on that just by just on its own merits it might be more successful than my other songs so this is my ni has been infatuated with this song but i haven't really gotten any fe feedback on it yet so in other words if the fe is not there um, eventually, it'll take a long time, but eventually I'll conclude which one's right, my NI or the FE. Um, but I do rely on external validation ultimately because I'm third slot FE polar FI. All right, so let's play it and see if you guys agree with me. Um, hopefully it won't be too loud. It's a very cloudy day in Los Angeles And 
today We run out of time Struggles pass Troubles still to come The day is nearly done Can someone buy us some more time? Cloudy day in Los Angeles Cloudy day in LA I'm no sort of evangelist But I've got something to say Cause life can strangely be forgiving those who stay awake all night Mostly voices say to give in They'll try to sap your will to fight Cause whether I'm supposed to be here Or just a soon forgotten noise Is sort of based on what I see execution of it ever uh, I kind of messed up the bridge which is new but um, regardless like I have a lot of NI faith in that one right but I could my NI faith could could easily enough take back seat if uh, it turns out that I don't get any really any feedback from it you know it may take people a little while a listen or two to to feel it also so there's also that you know it sounds like a chili pepper song okay well, you mean in general yeah okay um it's got kind of a well it's also about los angeles so it's kind of got a city of angels <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's a very different song than that. Uh, so, you know, like for example, when I figured out how to play Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze, I didn't really have a lot of strong thoughts about it until a lot of people gave me positive feedback about it. And I thought, oh, well, this actually is a really good song. Um, Prior to that, I just sort of thought, well, it's it's kind of a kid song because of the kids' lyrics, kind of, I guess. Oh, well, he's pucker tart, lemon squeeze, the friendliest guy that you will see. Yes, he wants to be your friend, but he comes from around the bend, and it will be a while till he sees you again. Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze, he's a friend to you and me, he's international. 
national delights. Favorite go to right hand guy, he's international like him, and he is also busy like his friend, the beaver bee. Busiest creature, busy as a bee, busy as a beaver, and so much busier than pucker tart lemon squeeze. Well, he's pucker tart lemon squeeze. Shabba doo ba da ba ba doo day. Shabba lemon squeeze. Shabba doo ba day. Yes, he's pucker tart lemon squeeze. Shabba doo ba da ba ba doo da. Pucker tart lemon squeeze. Shabba doo ba day. And, and if you go to visit him for starts, remember to bring something sour or tart. He's not a fan of sugary treats because he's pucker tart and not. Sweet. Well, he's Pucker Tart, Lemon Squeeze, the friendliest guy that you will see. Yes, he wants to be your friend, but he comes from around the bend, and it will be a while till you see him again. Pucker Tart, Lemon Squeeze, he's a friend to you and me. He's international delights, favorite go-to right-hand guy. He's international like him, and he's also busy like his friend, the beaver bee. Busiest creature, busy as a bee. Busy as a beaver, and so much busier than Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze. Well, he's Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze. Shabba doo ba da ba ba doo da. Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze. Shabba doo ba day. Yes, he's Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze. Shabba doo ba da ba ba doo da. Pucker Tart Lemon Squeeze. Shabba doo ba day. Pucker Tart. That's a fun song. I guess I'm playing the guitar now, huh? Okay, I'll play a couple more songs. I like this song a lot. It never really gets much feedback from anybody, but I like it anyway. A Santa Ann is from the east, are blowing, driving down this mountain fire. Grant and Lana had best be going, and they had cut it down to the wire. And everywhere apocalypse hung heavy, the truck was piling up with ash. Lana caught the dogs in the Chevy, and Grant counted out their petty cash. If times are ending, then time is bending. Flames rain down from the sky. But while the dogs knock out with Grant's exhaust, Lana stays awake to cry. 120 output labor day, and that means cooking meat outdoors. I got distracted and fire got away. Now from Bradford to Arcadia, they curse his name. Fire chased them west and down the incline until they reached the foothills below. Found a room cheap for the night online, at least now they had some place to go. Tomorrow they'd evaluate their options, now that their life had burned away. Lana's sister has a place in Laughlin, wasn't really any more to say. If times are bending, then time is bending. Flames rain down from the sky. While the dogs knock out, grass exhaust, Lana stays awake to cry. Grant exhausted, Lana stays awake to cry. <laughs> Sammy has a story that need be told. This is a song for an open boat, and such a thing must always do its job. Married up Jeb, turned 19, four years and three kids we Weary now and questioning perhaps Agency out of peace and discretion Locking in our courses Way too young Urgency conferred is really just a question Making sure those underneath them always run Doug at 20 thought bourbon fun, likewise Doug at 21, and so forth well up into middle age. Well, 
Once he thought would set him free, he gained his whole identity. Now does about another from Greenwich. Agency out, face discretion, clocking in our courses. Way too young. Agency conferred is really just a pressure. Surviving on their wages earned by lying While they feed their fear of dying Yes, let's feed upon the futures of the young Ba-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-
disrupt everybody's dreams Our frustrations mean mistakes are made Until it seems everybody's just throwing shade Not to be saved, but 
the wise pay terrible cost The one you thought you Acts like you never have met They made you pay for two As fate eating regret There's no one forsaken We all have been shook but being forsaken don't mean you're forsook And though in the past we've been hung out to dry We'll find them at last if we're willing to try People aren't Jesus once they're betrayed The easy believing forever is lost Maybe naivete is not to be saved But the wise pay a terrible cost Baby naivete is not to be saved, but the wise pay a terrible cost. Hard to sing, hard to play, but good song. I like it a lot. Makes me think of Double Mint Gum and uh, trips to the Jersey Shore. <laughs> What's the matter with Chad? Is he terribly bad? Is he very like Dan? Who's a terrible man? Is he sort of like Jill? Is he stuck on her bill? Or rather like Jack? He's stuck on the facts. What's the matter with Sue? Will she know what to do? If they bring attitude, will she show ingenuity? She talks about about you whenever we go walking. What's the matter with Brent? Is she living in sin? She's been hanging with Jim, looking terribly thin. What's the deal with Frank? Stealing fish from my tank. He's colluding with Lou, and they're talking to you. What's wrong with the ladies? What's the matter with Yeah. 
Sloppy, but I haven't played it in a long time, so not to be not totally unexpected. Oh, he came here with her, and what's the big problem that you can't endure? You seem so sure it's not appropriate claiming to blame things on Scott. Despite getting caught, he got reframing for him, training for him. Going to the gym to make yourself good enough again. collapse, returning to the urgency of isolated past, picturing community free of metaphysics when you're hunting buffalo and you're picking red delicious, knowledge of the seasons, wisdoms of old, fires blazing in the night to keep away the cold, hostility is kept at bay, by what you think is in the way, of life as children of the land, within the coffee Could have been. You lecture at the college, advancement is a sin, lamenting disconnection and every corporate act, asserting all your feelings and ignoring all the facts. Hostility is kept at bay by what you think is in the way of life as children of the land with an agave weatherman. You find modernity just so. Savages and beautiful comport, but few of history's people ever thusly did cavort. Cause life was solitary, nasty, brutish, poor, and short. Hostility is kept to bay. Hostility is kept to bay. What you think is in the way? By what you think is in the way? Life as children. 
children of the land With Danny Gobby Weatherman With Danny Gobby Weatherman Thanks. That went pretty well. That was fast. Yeah. No good comes from skating on with him Whom you mistake him for the one Situated defense and indecency, self-inflicted eventually once your search is done. Driving in the car last night, we had a massive fight. Each and just in me one right and the other one to blame. So when you put that stun, I scream something awfully blunt. My words is wrong. We're dumb. I burned my share of shame. It's each of our own failings, not us doing the nailing to the wall. We fish on the other sailing off to reset their life and all. You can trust me, I can trust you though. Neither trust yourself, much true. The love lives deep between you. Then we were right and the other one to blame So when you put that stunt I scream something awfully blunt My word is wrong If they were dumb I burned my share of shame My share of shame Still unsaid But still I need you 
bother me What's inside my head It seems like everybody's so sensitive And ready to just get mad I seek the simple ways of living like a kid Cause who wants to be the dad? Have we lost our sense of scope and scale? Our capacity to laugh? The sense to know when not to wail And how to tip the golden calf? I tried to stream this track and join the afternoon away But heavy new realities bear down on every day And for a bit I am out of it and still unsaid But still I need get out of me What's inside my head I'm so sad So sad for me So sad for her Unhappily You call sorrow I call home Blues that sink clear Down to the bone Down to the bone Still I'm sad play this song. I started over this one more time before I call it a um, yeah. It's a very cloudy day in Los Angeles and today we run out of time struggles past troubles still to come the day is nearly done Buy us some more time Cloudy day in Los Angeles Cloudy day in LA I'm no sort of evangelist But I got something to say To those who stay awake all night Voices say to give in We'll try to sap your will to fight Cause whether I'm supposed to be here Or just be too
Piao and Piao. Okay. Uh, you know what, actually? I've got one more song I'm going to play, which is the cover I like to play, too. Some, some folk call me a rambling man Cause I do a lot of thumbing and a kicking can But I won't do an answer good to call me names My daddy wasn't where they would go I wasn't born and raised in no ghetto Just a white boy looking for a place to do my thing Yeah, I don't want no hand out living Don't want any part of anything they give And I'm proud of why I got a song to sing Well, I said a few things and I'll admit it If you want to get ahead, you gotta hump and get it Just a white boy looking I'm gonna find me a wealthy woman in a line of work that don't take no diploma Cause I ain't got much to lose but lots to gain This is way too hot This is, I can't believe how hot this is It's been this hot the whole time Ah yeah 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 Eric You should have known better You did know better and you just didn't do anything anyway I'll take this from the top but It's too hot it's so distracting to see it peak all the time some folk call me a rambling man Cause I do a lot of thumbing and a kicking cane But I won't do an answer good to call me names My daddy wasn't where they would go I wasn't born and raised in no ghetto Just a rock boy looking for a place to do my thing I don't want no handout living Don't want any part of anything they give And I'm proud of why I got a song to sing Well I said a few things and I'll admit it If you want to get ahead you gotta hump and get it Just a rock boy looking for a place to do my thing I'm gonna find me a wealthy woman in a line of work that don't take no diploma cause I ain't got much to lose but lost the game. You might call me a good time fella but I ain't no black and I ain't no yellow just a white boy looking for a place to do my thing. I don't want no handout living, don't want any part of anything they give and I'm proud of my knockout song to sing. Well I said a few things and I'll admit it if you want to get ahead you gotta hump and get it just a white boy looking for a place to do my thing. Billy feared and ready, I gotta work just to be somebody I'm a white boy looking for a place to do my thing Yeah, I don't want no handout living Don't want any part of anything they give And I'm proud of why I got a song to sing Well, I said a few things and I'll admit it If you want to get ahead, you gotta hump and get it Just a white boy looking for a place to do my thing Said a few things and I'll admit it If you want to get ahead, you gotta hump and get it Just a white boy looking for a place to do my thing well, I said a few things and I'll admit it. If you want to get a hit, you gotta hump and get it. Just a white boy looking for a place to do my thing. Pretty snappy little number there. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to play my new song one more time because I want to get a good recording of it on the stream so I can listen to it with it's not, not audio, not all fucked up. I'm going to play it one more time. Or is that peaking? Sure. It's a very cloudy day in Los Angeles. And today we run out of time. Struggles past, troubles still to come. Day is nearly done. Can someone buy us some more time? Cloudy day in Los Angeles. Cloudy day in LA. I'm no sort of evangelist, but I got something to say. strangely be forgiving to those who stay awake all night mostly voices say to give in they'll try to sap your will to fight cause whether I'm supposed to be here or just be But 
pretty good okay that's gonna do it for the old el streamo de levo also known as the live stream thank you for being here if you stuck around for the music especially big thanks to that if somebody wants to do an after party or whatever put your links in now or forever hold your pee See what's going on here. No, it's not good. <laughs> it's all bad. Discord is just a place where people with chips on their shoulders shit on other people, you know? Thanks, Wandering Spirit. I appreciate it. All right, everybody. See you all later. Don't forget. I love you. Rachel loves you. I do. You are loved. You are loved. You are loved. Goodbye.